Yeah. Hello everyone, I'm Dylan and today we're going to be talking about the Stanford Essays. If you are new to my channel, welcome! I make college app videos. I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks for the Stanford Essays today and some general advice mainly for Stanford's application. But before we do that, I just want to take a hot second just to show you this new makeup look I did. I can't tell if this is like a watermelon sugar kind of thing or a kiwi strawberry. It's my first time really working with the color green. Let me know how you think it turned out. Also, let me know what color my eyeshadow should be in the next video. I think that'll be so fun and I'll try a new look. Okay, but this isn't a makeup channel, so let's start talking about college apps once again and jump straight into the Stanford Essays. Essays. This video is mainly going to cover the tips and advice that I have when approaching these essays, but if you want to see my accepted Stanford essays, then you can watch this video. In that video, you can see exactly what I did, exactly what I sent to Stanford for my essays and the different topics that I wrote about. First, let me talk about some general things that Stanford is looking for in their students. Stanford is looking for a thinker. They want to see how your mind works. Talk them through the process of your thoughts. Really take them into the situation or the story or experience that you are describing. What you're really trying to do with your essays is take the admissions officer into your mind. Literally, I read this book called 50 Successful Stanford Essays, which you can find in the link in the description. And this is where a lot of the tips that I'm talking about are coming from, and that really helped me write my own essays. And one quote that I really love in there is that your essay is a GPS to your mind. And this is kind of true for all college essays. I'm probably going to make a whole video about this, but college essays are literally a window, a GPS, a portal, a hyperlink to your mind and to your soul. So you don't just want to talk about something that you did and this, this, and this happened. You want to really engage them into the story and take them through your thought process and your feelings and how you went about it. Also, Stanford is really trying to see how you're different than everyone else through these essays. How do you stand out? What sets you apart than all the other tons of applicants that are applying? Think about ways that you can engage or surprise your readers while writing your essays, or maybe you want to take a creative approach to the way that you write them. Also, buzzwords don't help. Buzzwords like leadership, tenacity, adversity, they've heard all of these words before. So never actually try to impress the admissions officer with your fancy buzzwords or whatever. It's really about speaking from the mind and the heart to really encapsulate your being and your essence. Wow, that sounds so spiritual. Let's talk about the first essay. So actually, before we get into that, Stanford has three different essays that they have you write. And these are the ones that are like 250 words long, but they also have a bunch of additional little essay prompts that are only like 50 words long. And then there's a 150 word long extracurricular essay kind of thing. So so right now, let's just jump into the three main essays and I'm going to give you some tips on how you should go about them. The first essay is the Stanford community is deeply curious and driven to learn in and out of the classroom. Reflect on an idea or experience that makes you genuinely excited about learning. This essay is known to be the one where you should demonstrate intellectual vitality. Intellectual vitality, what even is that? Well, thank you for asking. Basically, they want to see how you're taking responsibility for your own education and pushing yourself to learn things that you are truly passionate about. I feel like intellectual vitality covers four different things. Your thoughts, your feelings, your passions, and your values. So for thoughts, I've kind of talked about this before, but it's the process of how your mind works. How you make decisions, how you understand ideas, how you question existing notions. And then for feelings, you really want to be honest. So honesty, self-reflection, authenticity, and vulnerability, definitely. And then your passions. What do you care about and why do you care about them? And what are the steps that you take to really engage in your passions? And then your values, the qualities and characteristics that make up who you are. So let's go back to the prompt. This essay is asking you to talk about an idea or an experience that makes you genuinely excited about learning. I think this is a really good opportunity to pick something that sets you apart from everyone else. And I really, really recommend approaching this essay with an experience or a story, like one specific kind of thing. So for this essay, students have written about music, about cells, about medicine, about having conversations with people with differing viewpoints, about going to a presentation to see one's favorite author. And when I wrote this essay, I wrote about my experience design designing a yearbook cover for my school. Once again, you can hear this essay in which I wrote about graphic design in my Stanford Essays video, which is in the link in the description. So in terms of my personal story for how I went about this essay prompt is first, actually, I wrote about math. I didn't even make my essay about design at all. I thought that I could write about math in a new and interesting way because I thought I had a really unique perspective of how I thought about math. 
But then I talked with someone who reviewed my essay and she thought it would be better if I actually didn't write about math since a lot of people who apply to Stanford are coming for a STEM major or coming from a STEM background. You know, they're really into science, technology, engineering, and math. So writing about math wouldn't necessarily make me stand out, but what would? Oh yeah, art, since art is something that is really important to me and specifically, so I can get even more specific than that, is graphic design. So I made my essay about design and I tried to also still loop in the whole like math brain kind of thing. So I also included some math terms in that design essay, but I also included a ton of art and design terms in that essay as well. All right, let's jump to the second essay. The prompt is, virtually all Stanford's undergraduates live on campus. Write a note to your future roommate that reveals something about you or that will help your roommate and us get to know you better. This one is known as the roommate essay. This is a great chance to show off your personality. A lot of people use this essay for humor and to include quirks about themselves. However, you don't want this essay to just be a bunch of your quirks and likes and dislikes. You really want to think about the certain qualities or hobbies or things that you like and have that will help you live with a roommate. Really take interest in what the roommate has to offer as well and not just you. The main tip here is try not to be too self-centered. All right, I'm gonna jump into a little quick story time for how I wrote this essay as well. When I first wrote this essay, I tried to be creative and I wanted to wrap it all in like musical theater and pretend like, oh, I am living in a musical and congratulations roommate, you just won a role into the musical of my life. I was really doing it just so I could stand out and be creative in the way that I was writing it and to really emphasize that I love musical theater. However, I had someone point out and I soon realized that this wasn't the best approach because it was making it seem like everything in the world revolved around me and my roommate would only be getting a supporting role in my life, which you don't wanna do that. So I totally understood those notes and they were so valid. So I actually rewrote my essay and I talked about like my smiley personality that like right when she walked in the door, I would be smiling and then I wouldn't ever stop smiling. How I looked forward to making friends and going to events with my roommates. I talked about my love for the arts and how I would decorate my wall with my art. And I actually did do that, go see my dorm tour. And I also talked about the more vulnerable times and how we would both help each other out through hardships and I'm willing to talk things out so we can really build this relationship together. So that's what I did. That was the roommate essay. Now let's move on to the last essay. The prompt is, tell us something that is meaningful to you and why. Okay. This one sounds super broad. I mean like literally anything that is meaningful to you. Wow, that's kind of a lot of things. But this is the chance to really get reflective. Think about things that are really meaningful to your life and have really impacted your development as a person. A tip for this one is to get specific. Because this is such a broad and general question, it does have a lot of room for flexibility and creativity, but you wanna narrow down on a specific experience or topic or idea. So what did I write about for this essay? I chose to write about journaling because it's something that I've done since the first grade, third grade, first elementary school. Let's just say that. And so basically I use journaling to help clear my mind whenever I have a lot of thoughts going on. I write when I'm sad. I write when I'm super happy. You know, just any time that I have deep feelings in me, I write it in a journal. And writing in a journal and just letting my thoughts flow out of me really helps with my mental health and my well-being. So instead of generally just talking about my journal and what I do and how I've been doing it for so long and blah, 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 I actually took the reader into a very specific experience of one time that I used my journal to help me. I set up this anecdote in which I was laying in my bed at night and trying to fall asleep, but I couldn't because in my mind I was replaying this embarrassing musical theater experience that I had previously that day where I was singing in front of the whole class and my voice cracked and my teacher was really disappointed in me. And so there I was in bed, just replaying this moment over and over again. And so I realized that in order for me to really feel better about myself and clear my mind and be able to fall asleep, I needed to take out my journal and start writing. This essay ended up being my favorite essay I wrote, like out of every college essay that I wrote for every school ever. I think this is really because it was so personal to me. And I think also because I wrote it in the most creative way out of all the other essays that I wrote and it has some metaphors built in and I just really love that. I'm actually gonna do an analyzing video for this essay very soon where I break down exactly how I went about writing the essay. And once it's done, I will link it up here. Okay, so that's what I had to say about the third essay. 
Now I'm just gonna briefly talk about the little short takes that they have you write. These are the 50 word long little uh, short takes, I already said that. This is another chance for you to show them how you are unlike everyone else. Think about ways that you can be witty, clever, creative, funny, stand out. Yes, you wanna say stuff that's not common, but you also wanna make sure that it's true to you. It can be witty, funny, creative, whatever, but is it really authentic and honest to you still? And my main, 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 main tip for this is to be specific. I say this in every video, but being specific is so important because that's also what makes you stand out. So then what you're writing about isn't just a general thing that everyone else is gonna say. I also just wanna give some tips on some of the specific ones, so let's get started. The question that asks you if you had one more hour in the day, how would you spend it? Absolutely do not say sleep. Everyone wants to be like, oh yeah, I'm working so hard all the time that I never sleep, haha. <laughs> and so if I had an hour, I would actually sleep. But don't say that because so many other kids have already said that. And you wanna really think about what you are bringing to the table. What's something new that you're bringing? You don't wanna bring sleep. For that question for me, I said I would exercise more, but I got specific and talked about like dance classes, yoga. Once again, watch the Stanford Essays video and you'll find out. The next little question I wanna talk about is, how did you spend your last two summers? For that little prompt, I'm gonna give you some quick tips. You don't have to make it a complete sentence. You can just state a bunch of things and string them all together. That way you're not wasting your word count. And for an example, this is what I wrote. I'll just give it to you. Coding an app, late nights experimenting with graphic design, new friends, dancing, note taking on the wise words of Broadway performers, finding confidence in my vocal abilities, finally, card games, driver's ed, dressing up grandma for fashion photo shoots, teaching kids the difference between mass and weight, and admiring your beautiful campus. See how I just listed a ton of things so I could just fit everything in my little word box. So basically I was stating a bunch of nouns and I turned some verbs into nouns by adding an ing at the end. That is one way of approaching this question, but I've also seen it done different ways. Another thing I've seen people do is list one year and then the next year. So they like put the date 20, whatever the year is, and then 20, whatever the next year is. And then they list like the programs and stuff they usually do. Also think about ways you can be clever with this. Instead of saying like, I did this program, I did this program, I did this program. I said what I actually did in the program without saying that I did a program. For example, coding an app. I was a part of Girls Who Code, but I didn't say that because they know I already did Girls Who Code. It's in my activities section. And I wrote about it for the little extra curricular activity essay. Another example, teaching kids the difference between mass and weight. I was volunteering at a kids program during my summer, but again, I didn't say that because it's already on my activities list. So instead I could get super specific and say exactly what I was teaching them, the difference between mass and weight. I also said finding confidence in my vocal abilities, and that really came from another program where I did some musical theater related stuff. But instead of saying I did a program, I said what I got from it, like I actually gained confidence and that's more personal. So that's my tip for that little short take. And now for the last short take I wanna talk about is this one. Name one thing you are looking forward to experiencing at Stanford. This is almost like a mini, 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 mini YS essay. You wanna get as specific as possible. What is one thing you are really looking forward to at Stanford? I actually took a very creative approach with this prompt and I wanted to talk about something super specific that I noticed when I was on a tour and I visited their design school. So I actually talked about one pink sticky note that I found taped to a door that said, and I quote, do epic shit and get epic shit done. So basically what I was saying in my essay is that I found that post-it and I really liked it and I wanted to have completed the message that it said on the post-it by the time that I graduated. So that was me telling Stanford, I'm going to do some epic stuff at your school. And yes, I used a curse word, but don't get mad at me. It was in the quote of the sticky note. Okay, the last thing that I'm gonna briefly talk about is the extracurricular essay that Stanford has you write. This one is briefly elaborate on one of your extracurricular activities or work experiences. What I personally believe to be the best strategy for writing this is if you are applying to any of the UC schools, you're gonna have to write some UC PIQs, right? And the UC PIQs are structured in a way or should be structured in a way that really elaborates on your activities already. So I actually talk about the difference between the UC PIQs and the Common App Essays in this video, which you should all watch. 
but basically you should emphasize more on the activities part in your UC application and then more on your personal thoughts and feelings and vulnerability and creative words and stuff like that in your Common App essay. So if you are applying to a UC school, then you might as well turn one of those PIQs into this extracurricular essay for Stanford. That's exactly what I did and I wrote about my experience with Girls Who Code. Alrighty, that wraps up the tips and advice that I have for these Stanford essays. I really hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments what you were thinking. If you have other ideas or things that you need help with, let me know and let me see if I can make a video about that. As always, you can find all my resources at this link. I have some free resources like a Google Drive link that has a bunch of different resources and documents there, which are really great to look at. I have this YouTube channel and I'm offering essay editing and college app consulting. And I may have some other projects in the works, but you may have to subscribe to my channel to hear about those updates. That is all for today. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day and good luck on those college applications. I'll see you later.